Hi, I'm Charlene Favorite, The Fascinating Life, bringing peace into your home, love into your relationships, and joy into your hearts. Today, I will be doing three um, different topics in one video. The first topic is going to go over how to create your recipe binder. The second topic is how to save money while grocery shopping, um, while also staying within budget. And then the third topic is going to be plating techniques, simple plating techniques, and what I use to ensure that I plate very well. So diving right in, this is my recipe book that I have shared in a previous video. It is a recycled binder that I used to use for homeschooling purposes. It is just one inch thick, but I do recommend getting a binder, a durable binder that is going to be more than one inch thick if you know that you have a plethora of recipes to fill in for your binder. Recipes are really easy to find. You can find it just on a simple word search, um, you can also find recipes on Pinterest, which I really recommend. Um, you can just type in a keyword and a bunch of recipes show for the keyword that you chose. You can also look on Pinterest boards that are filled with thousands of recipes sometimes in just one board. There's a lot of people who pin actively. So look on, on Pinterest. I also recommend YouTube. There are tons of YouTubers who really are focusing on nutrition and healthy living and they always have a blog to promote right back to their website and so if you click on a youtube video that has a wonderful recipe that you'd like to try chances are it is connected to a blog post that you can go to and just print out that um, that recipe from there if you have dietary restrictions and you know that the recipe that you just printed out isn't something that you're going to use to the fullest capacity of it, you can just scratch out whatever it is that you're not going to use and replace, you know, just write in there what you would use and replace of that. If that seems too tasking and you don't like the look of the scratch off, you can just copy and paste the recipe from the recipe blog into a Word document and change it around a little bit to suit you and your family's needs. So it's not that hard to create a recipe book as long as you have um, the width of the book is appropriate and as long as you have dividers. Dividers are going to be able to section off your recipes from breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, appetizers, beverages. So choose the um, divider topics that's best for you and your family. Um, the second thing I'm going to talk about is saving money while grocery shopping, but it's also really a part of staying within budget. If you have a family of more than two, you understand how important it is to stay within budget because after you go off of that budget, you're spending money over and over all month. Um, sometimes I've seen families, even on YouTube, tell their story and they have spent over $1,000 on, on groceries per month just because they're going back and forth to the grocery store, maybe just not being organized in how um, they are meal planning. And it's, it's a whole thing. So just make sure staying in budget is something that you have first in mind and put that um, in the forefront of your grocery experience. It is completely disrespectful to go over a budget if you know that your husband or even yourself have allocated a certain amount of money per month for your grocery budget. Going over budget in groceries is very difficult because now you have lost control of the finances of the home and you have essentially lost control of your eating habits. So just make sure you stay in budget and I'm going to provide you with just a few tips on how you can make sure that you stay within budget. The first thing I recommend is skip the snacks. Snacks for me, um, for my family, it's bananas and nuts. Usually, um, that's all that we stick to for snacks, something simple and something that is still filled with nutrition. Try focusing your eating on nutrient-dense foods. That is really going to help you snack less. You can still have that snack option, but it is going to help you snack less if your food is nutrient-dense for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you're having a big meal and you're finding that you're still hungry, maybe after an hour or so, I'm afraid that that meal probably wasn't um, nutrient dense for you. So just kind of restructure the snack portion. You don't want to fill up your cart and fill up your home with cal calories just, just 
meaningless calories. Um, so those thin, thin chips that I normally see in the store looks like a great snack, but they're like $6 for a huge container. And the, even though they're zero calorie snacks, they're just snacks. They're not really um, dense, full of nutrition. So just make sure you're checking that out and make sure if you are snacking, you are snacking on something that is going to provide you with nutrients for the rest of your day, empower you and not make you sleepy. The next thing to do is definitely meal plan. Planning your meals is completely beneficial, and I mentioned a little bit how to plan your meals in the last video that I've done. Once you know exactly what you're going to be using and what you're going to be eating, it makes it really easy for you to map out how much you're going to spend. If you shop at a, a local grocery store and you know, you are, let's say you're always in there, you know that milk is $4.99 or $2.13. That is something that you know to allocate towards milk and therefore you can kind of still estimate how much you're spending based on the meal plan that you create. If you know your budget isn't that big for the week, don't try to make completely elaborate meals that have maybe um, 10 different ingredients inside of it because then you're buying 10 different things to go into just that one meal. So just make sure you are conscious of the decisions that you're making. Along with meal planning, you'll be able to do your own inventory of what you have in your home. That's a part of um, what I mentioned in my last video. So when you are meal planning, you know that after you do your grocery shopping list, you shop your home and make sure you don't have anything on your grocery shopping list inside of your home. If you do have it inside of your home, you can take it off of your grocery shopping list. Therefore, you're kind of saving money and you're being smart about how you're planning your meals. The next idea that I have is look for sales. I love to go online to see what my local Publix has um, on sale. Publix has a lot of buy one, get one free. This isn't sponsored by Publix, but I absolutely love Publix and Trader Joe's. Those are the places that I use. I'm not telling you to go to five different places just for um, a few items to save a couple of cents because that's not logical and no one really has that time. But I am just saying look online for the um, local ads or just look in the newspaper for your local grocery store to see how much things are and then kind of um, play around with that when you are meal planning. Keep that in mind. The next thing is the cook from scratch you will see that you save a lot of money by avoiding prepackaged items. Prepackaged items don't always have a lot of nutrients in it anyway, so it's really better to make a lot of things from scratch. Now, there may be some people who are saying, I cannot afford to make things from scratch or I don't have the time. This is where you go back to planning things successfully. Once you get on a routine of, of creating a safe space for you to have control in your home, and, and really peace into your home, you find that it is easier and more reliable to make things from scratch, including breads or a lot of doughs if you use a lot of dough, or just even prepping things from scratch. Um, when you cook from scratch, you are eliminating those unhealthy habits and those unhealthy foods. So more about cooking from scratch a little bit later in another video, but I do want to just really stress the importance of cooking from scratch as much as you can. Um, my next tip is eating leftovers. If your family likes leftovers, make sure that you do eat the leftovers. That will help a lot in saving money. And this is also going back to meal planning. When you know that you're creating a big dish for the family and you're going to have leftovers, you can skip um, maybe one night and leave it for leftovers from throughout the week. So if that works for you and your family, definitely do it. Um, I recommend making double or triple of something that your family really loves and using that throughout the week. Um, and that way you're not spending as much money and you are staying within budget respectfully. Next thing is buying in bulk. Try to stock up on foods that you know you can get from bulk suppliers such as Costco's or Sam's Club, um, and I think BJ's is one too. I know there's a local place where I am in Tampa Bay called San Juan Food Market, and it's a wonderful place that a lot of farmers markets goes there, and um, it's a wonderful place that has bulk items. So if it's like a bag of mangoes, the bag of mangoes would be like 
I don't know, six pounds of mangoes that's frozen. Sometimes they even have whole natural foods there in very large quantities, like crates almost. <laughs> I'm not saying that you need that for your family, but it's a good way to get your flowers, oil if you cook with oil, um, milk, butter, the staples of what a lot of dishes have. You can get it from those big suppliers. You can also get organically if you're interested in getting organic foods at a much cheaper price with a lot more quantity. So definitely check that out. Um, next, you can also look at wholesale or co-op memberships. Um, that's a part of Costco's and um, a part of things like Sam Clubs and Farmer's Markets. And then lastly, shopping local vendors. Shopping local vendors allows you to kind of save on the name of organic because if your food is local, it's locally grown and it's not being sprayed in order to preserve it across county or state line. So if it's something local, um, let's say you're in a small town and they have like local vendors that just set up sometime even outside of the grocery store, definitely look into it. A lot of people skip it because they just see people on the side of the road selling food and they're like, okay, that's a little strange. <laughs> but really it's not as strange because those may be local farmers and you're definitely helping out local farmers when you do something like that. And um, the next or the last topic is plating techniques. I love doing plating techniques. Sometimes I get a little skimpy on ideas of how to plate something. And all I do is just go to Google. I go to Google, type in what it is that I am cooking, and um, I look at images of the finishing products. <laughs> and based upon the images that I see, I take the one that looks more appealing to me or something that I can actually do, and I, I use that as my plating basis. So plating techniques don't have to be as elaborate. You can simply just use like a, a quick Google search, and um, you can check for how the dish is supposed to look, and then use that as a nice basis. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about what I mentioned, please let me know in the comment box, or send me an email through my website at thefascinatingwife.com. Thank you. Bye.